Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Axis of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a, a great Monday. We'll get to all the action uh, in a second. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, all I ask is take one second. That's all it takes. Uh, take one second, uh, support the channel, drop a like, uh, share, subscribe, come aboard. Uh, and hopefully, again, I can continue to give you guys uh, value on a day-to-day -day unbiased uh, way. Got to take a coffee break. So let's talk about the market, right? So we lost the 50-day moving average on uh, 415. You guys remember that? If you've been watching this broadcast, you probably hate me for even using the word 50-day moving average. But hey, over, over 50 bullish, right? Below 50 bearish, let's take that for a second and put it aside. So we lost uh, on April 15th, we lost the 50-day moving average, and it started a pretty disgusting sell-off. For the next five days, we went just completely south, and we went from 435 uh, all the way down to 413. Then earnings season started, um, you know, kicked off earnings season. You had your Netflix and Tesla and Microsoft and Meta and Amazon and Google and everything else in between. Things are still uh, rolling in uh, as we speak. But the point was, the longer we built below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability this sell-off was going to, be going to be prolonged. This is why we play the game. This is why we don't make predictions. This is why we keep it strictly data-driven for the next trading day. Because what happened for the next two weeks was slowly but surely, Things started firming up, okay? Things started firming up, whether it was because of Fed comments, uh, data, earnings, whatever the case may be, the bulls started getting stronger. And even last Friday, when they initially got rejected off the 50-day moving average, we already knew what the, what the big reclaim area was. And we talked about it on last night's video, and it was 436.50. That was it. Like I said in the weekend video, you didn't need to have uh, extraordinary conversations with anybody. That was the number. If we built above that 436.50 level, well, that was going to be a really, really big green sign you know, for, for the bulls to charge. And that's exactly what happened. We uh, gapped up today uh, into that 436.70s. 436.50 level. And from then on, that's it. I mean, it was just technical. It was a technical go. And there was literally, you know, very few uh, down ticks throughout the day. And this was pretty much a stairway to heaven. And the bulls just went nuts. You got uh, another 1% rally uh, on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, if you look at all the indexes, this is the first time in a very, very long time all four of the major benchmarks are now above the 50-day moving average. Uh, you look at the SPY, again, confirmed Friday's channel. We're back in the range. We're back above the range. You got the diamonds first close today above the 50-day moving average. And you have the Russell, right? The Russell closed above on Friday and continued. So it's a pretty bullish sign. Uh, does that mean that now the market is going to go up every single day. There's not going to be a downtick. Everything is all, all good in the world. No, it doesn't mean, but that, that it means that there's going to be at least a nice tradable range, a nice tradable sentiment. And that is uh, the point of understanding that, again, bullish is over the 50 day, and that's where we are right now. Um, you know, look, if we have a debt, if we have um, a rest day tomorrow, okay, because it's, it's possible, right? Again, at the end of the day, uh, we did just go from just in the last couple of days from 420 to 440 in the queues. Is it possible we have a res day tomorrow on the indexes? Absolutely. But again, if it is possible that we do have a res day, what you want to do is go through the NASDAQ 100 names that broke out today or about to break out for tomorrow and try to buy dips on them. That's the whole point. Anything that's above the 50 day that is potentially going to rest tomorrow. And again, who knows if we are going to rest? I hope not. Uh, but if we do have a rest day tomorrow, use that opportunity for strong stocks to buy them into weakness, into rising support, 
And that's the whole point of a bullish trend. You're buying uh, strong stocks into weakness. And on a bearish trend, you are shorting uh, stocks into shorting weak stocks uh, into strength. And today, it's just one of those days, um, like, you know, like I talked about on Friday, you, you, there's no room for interpretation. Okay. Um, go through the NASDAQ one. Like, again, I trade the NASDAQ 100. Okay. I, I trade uh, prior, primarily 10 of those uh, of those 100 stocks all the time, one or the other, one or the other, one or the other. So it took me today three minutes, three minutes to set up my watch list, focus list, whatever you want uh, for tomorrow's session. You don't have to be creative. For tomorrow, guys, all you need to do is find stocks that are about to confirm the 50 day moving average. And get along those stocks, right? Get along those stocks. Let me give you guys a couple of names, just kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Again, you don't need to be creative for tonight, right? Let me give you guys some names. Look at Microsoft, perfect example. Like this is a perfect, perfect example. So Microsoft came out with earnings a couple of weeks ago. Decent numbers got rejected at the 50-day moving average, right? Then the stock got hit in the last three days it rallied. This is now the first close at the 50-day moving average. This is exactly what you're looking for. So tomorrow, if Microsoft confirms today's channel, it's going to open things up. Again, look, just look at the mirror image of Microsoft and the Qs, right? Take a, take a mental snapshot. You see how Microsoft closed on the light blue line, right? This is how exactly the Qs closed on Friday at the light blue line. So if Microsoft does this the same way the Qs did today, well, then Microsoft is going to light up. So that's a perfect example of a stock that is above the 50-day moving average, and all it just needs to do is get confirmed. There's a ton of names. I'm not going to go through the whole names. Again, guys, if you go through the NASDAQ 100, you know, you'll find 30 opportunities for tomorrow, right? I just stick with the high beta uh, names, but there's 30... 40 stocks you can, you can look at tomorrow. Even a name like Reddit, right? It has nothing to do with the NASDAQ 100. Look how close this thing is busting out. It is, it's, it's not even below or above the 50-day. It doesn't even, even recognize the 50-day yet. But look how close this Reddit is to this whole range here. If they could get above this $50 level, this thing's going to wake up as well. Uh, Amazon looks like it's a day away from all-time highs. That looks great. Um, Google, right? Google stopped right at the range. What we talked about, uh, Google will get to the pivots in a second. Stop top of the range here. So if Google re reclaims this five-day range, this thing's going to wake up. And Nvidia, right? Look at Nvidia. Nvidia was awesome today. Absolutely awesome. Again, we'll get to the uh, pivots in a second, guys. They were coming for when I mean size buyers. They were just coming for eight, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand. They were coming for two, three, four, five million dollars worth of premium in short-term expiration. We saw weekly 930s. We saw weekly 950s. Uh, we saw June 1000s. Phenomenal move. Now it all needs to do is get above the April 1st highs. April 1st highs and today's highs were exactly the same number. If it could confirm the April 1 highs, this thing is going to go back uh, to the top of the range. I still have a runner uh, from this morning. It looks great. It looks absolutely great. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today's pivots. Again, great, great action. Uh, Square, it's, it's so ironic. Like Square had a, a good quarter. They reversed down to red on Friday and today was up. Got, go figure. Obviously never confirmed. Uh, Coinbase, uh, there was a two-sided pivot here. 233 upside, 216.55 downside. Guys, like watch coin for tomorrow, right? Watch coin. So it took out the 230, 233, traded right to the 50-day moving average. If this thing confirms the 50-day moving average for tomorrow, right? If this thing confirms the 50-day moving average tomorrow, it's the same chart as Microsoft, the same chart as the Qs, the same chart as Spies. If Coin confirms the 50-day moving average tomorrow, then you got to move to 239 and above 239. This thing could really, really get going. But nice pop for you guys who traded uh, Coinbase. Uh, Tesla, nice trade. Uh, it was a nice trade. It was a nice trade. I got long with the 55 and change, 85 and change level. It confirmed 86, went to 87.50. There was a big reload seller in the stock, which I kind of don't understand why. Uh, but, you know, Tesla is just, you know, just trading weird. It really is. It's trading weird. Like, I really thought we were going to get a move all the way back to this 190, 191 level. Didn't quite happen, but, it, you know, decent move today, uh, nevertheless. Um, let's see here. Uh, Google stopped right at the range. It closed, literally, guys. 168.10 needs to build. It literally closed right at 68.10 on the close. 
But this was the big one right here. This was the big one right here. Carvana did okay as well. Congratulations, you guys who traded Carvana. Uh, 124.20 uh, needs to build. Here was Carvana. Took out the 24.20, traded all the way up to 29 uh, before it reversed. But this was right here, the trade of the day. Uh, NVIDIA, 2.890.280 and the pre-market highs of 8.94.50. They need to confirm and NVIDIA went... NVIDIA, right? That's the best way of saying it. NVIDIA, when NVIDIA, it took out this whole channel, took out this whole channel, took out the 907 that we talked about on the weekend video, and this is now the highest close in this whole formation. If NVIDIA can just build a new base uh, above 923 or so, if he could just build a new base above 923, there's a, there's a shot, man. There's a shot we go back uh, to the top of the range uh, in the March highs. That would be uh, absolutely sweet. So that's it. I mean, you don't really need to, uh, you know, break down the atom today. You don't need to uh, go uh, very creative today on today's watch list. Guys, go through the NASDAQ 100. Any stock, literally, that's that, that got rejected today off the 50-day moving average and needs to confirm tomorrow, that's what you want to watch. Keep it simple, stupid, right? The acronym KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Tomorrow, it looks like some great value on deck. Again, is it possible the indexes have an inside day rest day? Of course, after a big, big move, it's all possible. But again, we're not trading the indexes from here. We're waiting for the stocks to get individually pulled up so they could confirm as well. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow on the field. Take care, everybody.